presentation and my comments will be quite short to every screen uh, I will show you. But of course, uh, I'm open to any questions after my semi lecture, okay? Chronology of the sources I would like to discuss starts around 2700 BC and ends in 1115 BC because uh, the number of the sources is so outstanding that a longer period would be not <coughs> <coughs> to be made by a single person for the one single conference. And the provenience of the sources we have nine different regions, it's Sumer, Babylonia, Syria, Mari, Yamhat, Emar, Hama, and Eb. First of all, we have the title King, who is son of King, who was son of another king, and uh, this is a title with which Gergotefen started to work on Persepolis inscription. She told us that there is a King X, there is Y, King, son of X king, and Z, king, son of Y king, who was also son of X, who was also king. And such model we can uh, see in Assyria, the X king of Assyria, and, and so on and so forth. For example, when we have three kings, it's Adad Narawi, grandfather, Shalmaneser, father, and Tukulti Ninurta, king of Assyria, son of Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, who was son of Adat Narari, king of Assyria. We have also some kings who would like to invoke more than one predecessor, like it was in the case of Ashur Balit, and you can see Ashur Balit was son of Eri Adat, grandson of Ashur Ebed Nishesh, grand grandson of Ashur Narari, grand grand grandson of Ashur Rabi, grand 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 grandson of Nazi, grand 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 grandson of Pujur Ashur, and he could not be another grandson because nobody knew who was before Pujur Ashur. Nevertheless, if there was anybody before Pujur Ashur, I suppose it would be also included into the titular of Ashur Ubalit. Nevertheless, we have much more inscriptions with the title King, Son of King. As you can see, we have 269 fragments with such Part. There is a very simple model. We have a king X and a Y, his son, who was also a king. And for example, Siniriban, king of Uruk, <coughs> and Singamil, king of Uruk, who was son of Sinirban, who was also king of Uruk. And here you can see some exemplars of such titles. As you can see, we have kings, we have generals, we have kings of different places like Mari, Ur, Lagash, even a king of Gutium was a son of Enrida Pizri, his father, and unknown ruler of unknown place, written as Bar, was also the king, uh, son of Aho Ilum, the man of Ilumbe, the man of Urkup. Here there are some more examples for such titles. The most interesting is the last one. We don't know the name of the King of Kish because uh, text is damaged in this uh, moment, but the King of Kish was offspring of Lady Dragon. So we have at least one mother and not a father as a predecessor of uh, the King. We have also the title of King who was a descendant and heir of King. Only seven cases, mostly from uh, Old Babylonian period. <coughs> so we have King X, then King Y, and Z. He was a king, descendant of X, his grandfather, and heir of Y, his father. For example, Hammurapi, the best known king of Babylon, then Samsung Luna, his son, and then Abi Eshu, descendant of Hammurapi and heir of Samsung Luna. We have also only three cases uh, when the king named himself 
as the grandson of king and not as son of king. And first of all, we have Eana Atuma, ruler of Lagash and grandson of Urdansha, Il, who was king of Umma, grandson of an Akale, and Samsu Iluna, king of Babylon, grandson of Sin Mubali. And this last case of Samsu Iluna is the most interesting because Samsu Iluna is grandson of Sin Mubalit, successor in fifth generation of Sumulail, but this king, being a son of Hammurabi, does not present himself as the son of Hammurabi. For us, it's uh, quite strange why not Hammurabi, the great father, but Sin Mubalit grandfather and Sumulail, a predecessor in more than one generation. We have also some other cognates in these inscriptions. <coughs> For example, Enanatum is ruler of Lagash and brother of Eanat. And Enmetena is ruler of Lagash, nephew of Eanat. And why nephew? Because we can say that uh, the title of the king and the legitimation of power should be at least two generations in the past. But in fact, it looks like not two generations, biological generations, but two generations of kings. So, because before Enmetena we had an anatom, his father, and before an anatom, his father, we had a anatom, his nephew, we have two generations of kings, not two biological generations. That's why we have Enmetena, who is nephew of Eanatum because he's a second generation of rulers. We have, of course, also kings who were sons of gods or sons of goddesses, and 45 cases we can find in our sources. <coughs> As you can see, usually we have one divine being as the parent of our king. So we have Goddess Nipursang, God Lugal Urukar, nobody knows how we can read it, God Enlil, and Goddess Nim Agala. But we can find also rulers who had more than one parent. For example, Gudea, ruler of Lagash, had three mothers. Gatundu, Nansha and Minsula. <coughs> Lipit Eshtar was a son of divine couple Enlil and Ninlil. And Ishnadagan, this is nothing surprising because Ishnadagan was the son of God Dagan according to his name. We have also other relations between kings and gods or goddesses. Only 22 cases, but still. Eanatum is spouse of Nanna. Naram Sin is spouse of the goddess Ashtar Amenitum. Amar Suena, again, is spouse of Inanna. And Samsu Iluna, brother of the goddess Zababa, the goddess Ashtar. <coughs> we have only one case when the king is son of king, but also father of another king. This is the case of Kudun Mabuk, who was the son of Shinde Shilhak father of Amorite land and father of Warad Sin. In two cases we have a king who is a son of a place. First <coughs> is Gumildu, son of the city of Gursar, and Sid Dinam, king of Larsa, son born in Gaesh. So we do not know anything about father, about mother, about any uh, family relatives, only about place from which this king comes. And the last is a king who is the god. We have only two god kings. First is Naramsi. He was god of Agade. He had no any relatives. He does not mention father, mother, brother, nephew or anybody. He is just uh, he and himself is a god of Agade. And Talpush Atili, <coughs> who is son god of Nagar, but he is the son of terrestrial father, being a son god of Nagar. So now we can go to the conclusion. First of all, we have usually predecessors as a family relatives in 
legitimization of power. And most often this is father, but also most often it is typical for the kings who are of nomadic origins. Sedentary kings usually use more than one generation. If we have sedentary kings, mostly we have father and grandfather, but this is not a most used uh, title. And father and grandfather is applicable to every Assyrian ruler. Every and each Assyrian ruler is a son of his father and grandson of his grandfather. Sometimes we have older generation or other cognates, like in Enmetema, who is ruler of Lagash, son of Enanatum and nephew of Enanatum. And sometimes we can have more than one father, more than one mother, but of course, then at least of father of mother is of divine nature. Exceptionally, we have successors of places like in the case of Kudurmabu, Gunidu or Sinidina. <coughs> and divine relatives. We can find cognates like father, mother, brother or sister. And we can find also some in-law relatives. And we have one such example, it's a wife and we have also a situation when there we have no divine relatives and this is applicable for Assyrian kings. They have sons of their fathers and grandsons of their grandfathers but never they have any relations, family relations to gods. <coughs> we have one only other exemplar of husband of priestess. Mesanepada, king of Kish, is spouse of the new Greek priestess. And her name was Nina too. We have also a situation when we have no relatives, and no relatives, absolutely no relatives, we have in the case of kings of Agade. Sargon was the king of Agade, Rimush also king of Agade. They had no father, no mother, no brother, nobody. They were just kings of Agade. And the last thing that we can find in the royal inscriptions is the power of uh, local tradition, especially in uh, southern Mesopotamia, because when we look on the inscriptions of Ur three kings, usually they describe themselves as spouses of Inanna. And immediately after Ur three period, we have Isin Larsa period, and Isin Larsa kings are also spouses of Inanna, not sons of fathers, but spouses of Inanna. It seems like they took Ur three tradition in royal titulary. And also we have very long-lasting tradition in uh, Assyria because all Assyrian kings are sons and grandsons and have no divine relations. So excuse me and apology again for my voice and thank you very much for your attention.